Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. We got music here at all? Ryan, no? Okay. <laughs> Maybe you want to hum something. Yeah. Or sing. All of our guests today, including Thomas Drance, I, I can't get into the rhythm of the segment it. now. I, 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 I without music, music, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without music. All of our guests today, <laughs> okay. All of our guests today, including Thomas Drance, standing by without music, are brought to you by the Waddling Dog Pub. Their 50 seat patio opens seven days a week with a new menu coming soon featuring the Donnie and Dolly cocktail. Also, a UFC night start on June uh, 10th. Just before we get to Thomas. Don D from Nanaimo, Delaney's OK Tire in Langley inbox. Rick, we look at the Canucks right side. Yeah, it needs help, so we just overpay Ethan Bear because he has the most experience. Come on, we can't afford another overpaid D man again. That's D, uh, T- Don D in Nanaimo. Overpaid is when you're talking about guys making five, six, seven million who are underachieving. I don't think a guy at two two with two hundred fifty one games in the NHL is an overpay. Thomas Drance uh, joins us. Uh, he covers the uh, Canucks for the Athletic. Have we got Thomas? He just uh, dropped out. We're having some connection issues. I don't know where Thomas is. So no music. No music. And, uh, no, and no Thomas. No Drance. Hold on. He, he's, he's coming back down. We Drance okay. isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. He's, it's probably on his side. Hey, and this from Sam in Richmond. Delaney's okay. Tyron Langley in- inbox. And by the way, best is it just me a submission today. Gets a couple of Lion tickets for tomorrow. Sam in Richmond. We didn't talk about this in the first segment. The Canucks should get back Troy Stetcher. Sign him for cheap. Right-handed defenseman. Well, Troy Stetcher is a UFA, folks. And last year on July 1st, the Canucks, within the first 12 minutes of free agency, called Troy Stetcher's agent. We'll see, Donnie. Maybe with all these issues on the right side, they go back and maybe try to get Troy Stetcher again. So now you're endorsing getting rid of Ethan Bear. No, I'm not. Going you... out and getting Troy Stetcher. That's no, what I'm hearing. I didn't say that. You brought up Stetcher. I'm telling you. Hey, you never know. Can we just get a little snippet of music just to make me feel better? Oh. No? Thomas Drantz joining us uh, from the uh, Athletic Thomas, thanks for doing this, sir. We got you on. Sans music. How are you? Oh, he froze. Can you keep him like that for like the next 10 years? <laughs> oh, my God. This is a disaster. So can we get the freeze frame back up? Okay. Why don't we do this? Make it a phone call. Forget about the Zoom, and we'll, we'll, we'll move on from there. Okay. All right. Uh, can I just say something while while I, I need to uh, to tap dance here? This has to. This is some North Burnaby stuff. Okay. Oh, good, good. I like North Burnaby stuff. Uh, Wayne Bateson and Dolores Nicholas. Yeah. Alpha grads from the mid seventies. Oh. Tomorrow at their home in Langley. This is for all you, and you can reach these people. I'd imagine through social media. They're having their annual pig roast for <laughs> Alpha grads of seventy. Oh, for Alpha grads. Yeah. Okay, so Are Wayne you going? And, and Dolores, I don't think so. There's a lot of minor hockey going on uh, this weekend. They have it every third Saturday in, in June. I, I, I'm, I'm just doing like a North Burnaby you, PSA here. You ripped me last week for going to the NWSS uh, golf tournament and showing a picture of it, and now you're, this you're, is, you're, this, pumping, uh, that's, you're pumping alpha. Uh, golf tournaments are cliche. They're so new west. This is North Burnaby. We're ahead of the curve. This is a pig roast. Can, of course, they're living in Langley now. Can I counter? So, Wayne and, and Dolores, best of luck. Yes? Can I counter your alpha information with July, uh, June 20th, Burnaby mm-hmm. North is having oh. a walkthrough of the school. before. Oh, the new school? Uh, the I believe the old one before oh. they demolish it. Okay. You Interesting. Know, so, Burnaby trip North, down memory lane. The better Burnaby North. Oh, school. stop it. Okay. <laughs> stop it. So, all the best to Wayne, Wayne and Dolores. My friend Ed, are you paying attention here? My friend Ed Dixon informed me of this uh, yesterday. So pig roast at his house? In the backyard, obviously. <laughs> well, I don't... No, it'd be the front room. <laughs> okay, we got Thomas? Is he frozen? All right. Uh, Thomas Drance joining us from The Athletic on the phone. Ah. That's called tap dancing in the world of broadcasting. Thomas has done it before. How are you, sir? Unreal. Oh, man. Speaking of pig roast, the start to this <laughs> segment. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's an insult. To, that's an insult to pig roasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's luau style. We're buried under Ooh, dirt, but we'll yeah, still yeah. be delicious. Let's I've been, go. Uh, I've been to a couple of those. Hey, uh, Ethan Bear, what's the best course of action uh, for the Canucks, Thomas? Well, I, look, it's clear the organization's high on him. They should be. 
he came in and played really well, uh, changed uh, a lot about how this defense could play, particularly in terms of his effectiveness on retrievals. I, I, they need him. Like, they need him. And yet, you know, given the injury situation, I think managing the relationship, not qualifying him and ideally coming to a one-year agreement before the qualifying offer deadline uh, for us for a lower, a reduced cap hit, one that's perhaps easier to get off of LTI in mid-December would be the most team-friendly outcome here. Now, uh, obviously requires the participation <laughs> of, of the player and his agent, Jason Davidson, who I understand is speaking to you all next. So, um, you know, the fact is, though, is the $2.2 million tying up that level of cap space on a player who's not going to be available for the first 25-ish games of the season, um, even though he's a, a competent right, right side defenseman and probably the third best defender period on this roster, uh, you know, you have to be really careful about it. So uh, my sort of expectation would be uh, you find a way to do a one-year deal prior to the qualifying offer deadline at a reduced cap hit. Uh, I think that's best for the player, too, given given the fact that he'll still have five, six months to make his case uh, prior to hitting unrestricted free agency. Um, so I think Bear remains in the club's plans, but I do think the injury changes the trajectory of how exactly that gets brought about this summer. So, Thomas, with him out, Possibly two months of the first, uh, the first, uh, the two months of the season next year. Would you mm-hmm. be open to Noah Juleson or uh, Kyle Burrows to bring a, a, yeah, either course. one of those back? Uh, both of them back, if if you can. I mean, I thought Juleson looked really good on Quinn Hughes's right side. Now a lot of guys do, but that doesn't mean that Juleson didn't play really well for Rick Tockett um, when he got that shot late in the season before he got hurt. Um, you know, and, and obviously didn't play enough games to uh, qualify as a restricted free agent, is, is a Group 6 UFA. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it makes a ton of sense for the Canucks to bring him back. He, he brings a, a level of size that not a lot of other Canucks defenders have. And I'm always impressed with his feet. I think he's got really good feet for a man his size. So, uh, you know, I, I'm totally open to that. And then Kyle Burrows, I mean, I don't think there's any world in which Kyle Burrows was anything short of one of Vancouver's four best defenders last season. Uh, I think he's consistent. I think the work rate is always high. Uh, I, you know, I, I love the way that he's willing, despite being a welterweight, uh, to step up, you know, <laughs> fight some very tough, large gentlemen in the NHL. Um, and he's good defensively, and he's a good enough puck mover to hold up. I wonder if the Canucks want uh, bigger bodies on the back end. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I suspect they. I suspect they might, but uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you also just need guys who can play, guys who are smart, two-way defenders. I think. I think Kyle Burrows fits the bill. Um, you know, for me anyway, if you could get both of them uh, at under one point one five million a piece, so that you know you have the option to to build your roster as you see fit, uh, that would certainly help. Uh, but obviously it's not enough. Like, I don't think Juleson or Burroughs should be your answer to the what do the Canucks do now on the right side question. Uh, they need more. Like, they need more than that. And, you know, that's a problem, right? Like, Bear is a really good player. Or Bear is a good player, a competent option, a guy who I think can even play top four minutes for you on the right side, and you'll be fine. And that's a really good player. That's, like, a very valuable player in the NHL. But... If a reasonable reaction to Bear being injured for two and a half months is, you know, wow, that really hurts this team, uh, that speaks, that says way more about the team than it does about Ethan Bear. Thomas, haven't talked to you uh, since the combine in Buffalo, but it sure sounds to me like the Canucks liked a lot of defensemen and centers there. Uh, they really like uh, Nate Danielson out of Brandon, Dalibor Dvorsky out of Sweden, a couple of centers, mm-hmm. Tom Melander, a defenseman out of Sweden. What's your gut feel coming out of Buffalo uh, about the Canucks and what they might do at the draft? Well, I've been pretty consistent in suggesting that I think positional need is going to be a big factor in, you know, deciding which which name the Canucks call out on the draft stage should they remain at 11 um, in Nashville for the NHL entry draft in 2023. Uh, Danielson would fit the bill. Volander would fit the bill. But in both cases, I'm not sure you're looking at players with the sort of upside to really warrant being top 15 picks. Uh, you know, uh, Zach Benson, Colby Barlow, that sort of class of winger. You can understand why the Canucks would find that tempting. Those are immensely talented players. Benson, for me, 
uh, you know, of the of the five names we know got a rose from the Canucks in, you know, NHL draft combine, the bachelor edition. Uh, I, I would say mm-hmm. that uh, I would say that Benson is far and away the best prospect, like a totally different caliber of prospect than the others. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's just too bad if if you hadn't gotten run so hot down the stretch, right? We'd be having the like Reinbacher, Dvorsky, Benson conversation, which is a really interesting one in my mind, as opposed to the Belander, Danielson, Barlow conversation, which oh boy. That's a significantly different conversation in my mind and reflective of just how much value the Canucks lost with the way that they handled their end of season. Yeah, uh, fifteen second answer, uh, Thomas. OEL hurt yeah, good last luck. last year. <laughs> the, Sixteen and a half. Uh, OEL gets hurt uh, last year at the World Championships. Uh, Ethan Bear gets hurt this year at the World Championships. What does this mean for Canucks' participation at the Worlds in the future? Uh, it's bad luck, but, you know, it sounds like in Bear's case anyway, he aggravated an injury <laughs> that he'd been dealing with for a while. You know, I, I like the Worlds as a tournament. I think if you miss the playoffs going over there, feeling good about your game, having a chance to play some meaningful hockey in a year in which your club missed the playoffs, like I think that's gravy for <laughs> Canucks players you know, I, I was disappointed for Elias Patterson that he wasn't able to wear the Trey Cronar this summer. I don't think the Canucks should be looking at two pieces of bad luck and change their overall approach. Representing your country when you get the chance to do it, playing in a, a high-level tournament like the World, that's, that's gravy for players. And the risk of injury, that's there during the summer, too. That's there during scrimmages in the summer. That's there when you're working out. Uh, that's there when you're crossing the street. Like, you can't Injuries are part of life in hockey. You can't avoid the game. Um, you can't live in bubble wrap if you're a professional hockey player. It took a while, but we got you, Thomas. Thanks so much for this. We'll yeah. talk to you talk to you next Friday. Have a great weekend. Perfect. Yeah, no 15-second answers and no 15-second intros to my segments apparently today. Hey, thanks, yeah. boys. Have, enjoy your weekend. You bet.